Welcome back to the Baseball Show. I am your host, Andy Singleton, joined as always by Ralph Lifshitz. Uh, we are here to talk three hitters with you today. We want to thank everybody that's been tuning in to right here to Nickel Press TV, subscribing. Our following has become humongous, and we are now the fastest growing fantasy baseball show on YouTube. When I say humongous, I am speaking moderately, of course, but we are still humbled and appreciative of it nonetheless. So thank you to everybody for giving us the thumbs up on these videos, for liking them, for watching them, re-watching them, whatever you're doing, sharing them. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the pause button, subscribe, resume play. If you don't like these videos, because let's be honest, if you're not enjoying these or finding them beneficial for your for your use, then there's no point in us doing them. And uh, so if you don't like what we're doing, please leave a comment, God bless you, and let us know what you would like us to improve upon or players you'd like to hear or things you'd like to hear more about. God bless you again. Uh, with all that being said, you see we have a nice loose chemistry that goes on at, uh, around here. Uh, <laughs> if you do like the show, hit the like. Give us a thumbs up. Like I said, subscribe. Don't forget to go to the player library. Check all the players we covered to, to this point. We're up to nearly 100 now. Uh, we're going to go to about 125 in total, and we're going to get into some uh, positional battles, camp battles, that kind of stuff, and uh, a whole bunch of other fun stuff throughout the season. So – with that being said, let's move into three hitters today, all middle infielders, two second basemen, one shortstop, all young guys, all high upside guys, all guys you've probably heard about for their, you know, their prospect status. Uh, we're going to start with Jose Peraza, who has had finally some good luck go his way, or at least we think. Uh, I'm just going to start off by saying this is one of my personal favorites, and I'm talking in all of baseball. He's finally had some breaks go his way, as I was mentioning. You may remember he was a high-profile shortstop prospect in the Brave system. He basically was Ozzy Albies before Ozzy Albies. Uh, he's always had an extremely advanced hit tool and ability to run the bases. By that, I mean he was expected to be an above-average 300 MLB hitter and steal at minimum probably 30 bases a year. If given the time, and that was the problem, he wasn't being given the time. First, he was moved off of shortstop to second base for the Braves incumbent at the time, Angelton Simmons. Let that sink in for a minute. Uh, he then tried you know, to go to the outfield when Jace Peterson uh, had a little success, a modicum of success at second. Uh, the Braves then traded him when they thought Malik Smith might be the answer in the outfield. So literally this guy was shuttled around three positions in Atlanta, uh, moved to the Dodgers, who they kept him at second, uh, then moved him to Cincinnati. Meanwhile, the Dodgers had this incredible need for a guy just like Peraza a mere year later. Uh, anyway, he's got all this stuff going around. He's bouncing all over the place. Uh, he finally got an opportunity to play a little bit last year, and he did exactly what we thought he would do. He hit 324. He stole 21 bases, and that was in roughly half a season's worth of uh, at-bats. He now has an opportunity from day one, uh, second base in since he is his. And, you know, I give you this whole background because it's also a, a great lesson on why you should not fall in love with prospects because despite how good the guy might actually be, it doesn't necessarily mean he's going to find his path to the majors. So I am happy that Peraz is still young enough that it's maybe finally working in his favor because this guy is really, really, really good. Yeah, I totally agree. And he's a guy that I took a shot on early on last year. Uh, in drafts and had taken him, you know, with a last round fly or something like that, hoping he could fill in for my speed position and second base. Because in a lot of ways, he's almost like getting Billy Hamilton, who gets drafted very, very early as an outfielder, as a middle infielder. Um, you know, maybe he doesn't hit as much power, but it's not like Hamilton has a whole lot of power. But, you know, Peraza has almost none. But this is a contact guy. He had 80% contact rate last season it was 89 in limited games the season before he's got a 70 to 80 grade speed tool you know he can run for days um it should be all systems go this year in cincy i was super excited when brandon phillips got moved it sounds like there's no issue with dillison herrera who was also acquired by the reds last off uh excuse me last trade deadline uh there doesn't look there's going to be any issue with herrera uh taking some starts from him i think zach kozar could eventually get moved there's even a chance peraza could move to shortstop full-time and we'll see about that uh but the great thing about him right now is he's got 
multi-position eligibility because of all this sort of shuffling around and crazy business that he's had to deal with over the last three seasons. So he's got second base, shortstop, and outfield eligibility in most leagues. Uh, he's a guy that can steal, I think, you know, 35 plus bags. He's got those kind of wheels. Could hit 280 to 300 plus. Score a lot of runs, even on a bad team. Being in a team like Cincy, I think you know they're going to struggle to score runs, so they're going to need somebody like him, you know, stealing as many bases as possible. Should be all systems go, and he might be a better hitter than Billy Hamilton. So there's a chance this guy could you know finagle his way into a leadoff role as well. Um, I love Peraza. I've drafted him in a few places already. Um, in dynasty leagues, I've been trying to grab him for a year plus, knowing that eventually it would break and, you know, he would eventually get a starting job. Looks like that ha- that's happening. And, and I'm pumped to own him. So all systems go on Peraza. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the shortstop thing, because when he was coming up, he was regarded as a as a top shortstop prospect, uh, not just because yeah. of the hit tool, but because of the advanced glove. He He's a good defender. Uh, so I, I'm actually kind of happier he's on second now as opposed to short because of how deep shortstop has become. Uh, it's almost like if he was playing shortstop and you don't have a middle infield position, um, he you, he might not even be able to get on your roster because there might be other shortstops with you know higher uh, power profiles that you'd rather slot in as your starter over Peraza. You mentioned you know the comparing him to Hamilton. I think he has a way more advanced hit tool than Billy Hamilton. I yeah. think this guy's an absolute guaranteed 300 hitter. Where Hamilton will be lucky to hit for 300. We've seen he can be you know potential with the bat, uh, but as far as power, neither of them have anything. So we're we're really looking with these two guys: average runs and steals. And I think Peraza gives you more than Hamilton across the board in that department. Maybe, you know, you're going to have to, you know, suck up 20 steals or so. But you said 35. I said 30 at bare minimum. I agree. It it could be 40. It could even be 50. This guy is elite level potential when it comes to that. So uh, all systems go for you. All systems go for me. And I'm happy to see that he's finally getting his opportunity. Devon Travis is another second baseman that – you know, we have this discussion with other players, but is it fair to label someone as injury prone when it's different parts of you that break down and cause you to miss significant time? I think it's – is it okay to damage you as damaged goods, to, to view you as damaged goods, I should say? Uh, he's the 16th second baseman. He's 201st overall right now, uh, NFBC ADP data, of course. You know, he's a good major league hitter, and I'll even take that. A little further and say he's an above average one he is a legit 300 threat with some pop but you know he didn't just slow down he completely stopped stealing bases completely and in you know today's era you need at least 10 from your second baseman uh if you want to you know stay on par with other guys he's not making up for it with significant power it's not like you know rugnet odor or something who's you know challenging for 30 you know we're talking maybe maybe a dozen, you know, homers. He's more of a, you know, doubles guy. He's got some powers, you know, he'll give you some runs, but, you know, nothing across the board that's going to wow you. And, um, you know, most negatively, like I said, he has yet to put together a full season. Uh, With it all being tied to his health, you know, I, I don't have any faith until I see him do it at least once. And I have a hard time believing he can do that. So, you know, I, I'm off the, you know, he, he's kind of a sexy sleeper, kind of, you know, people trying to be smarter than others in the room and think he's a high upside guy. Yeah, he can be. But that's, again, if he's able to manage a regular, a full regular season of that bat. So are you a Travis guy or see somebody you're passing on? Yeah, I think I think Travis is an excellent sleeper, um, especially if he can't of get course one of the, you do. Like, one of the top rated second basemen in. In, in the draft right now, if you look at where second basemen are going, I know you said shortstop's deep. Shortstop's not even remotely deep in comparison to second base. Second base might be the deepest position in fantasy baseball right now. And Travis is one of the few guys that you can get as a sleeper. And the thing with the injury prone thing, he had a shoulder injury that lasted two seasons. So it cut off the end of one year and then led into the next. When he came back, 100 games after from you know his return, he hit 300 with 11 homers. Um, it's tough for me to call anybody under the age of 27 injury prone. Uh, if you look at guys like Ian Kinsler and Nelson Cruz, who were labeled injury prone, 
you know, early in their careers. You know, Kinsler had three more, more or less missed seasons before the age of 26. Since then, he's had 150 games played in five out of his last six seasons. Same thing with Cruz, another guy that broke off of that. So I'm, I'm not going to call Travis totally injury prone because it's been one injury. So he got over it. We saw, you know, 300 average, 11 homers. Um, across 162 games, across the two major league seasons that he's had, excuse me, 163 games. So one game more than a full major league season. He's hit 300 with 92 runs, 19 homers, 85 RBIs, and seven steals. So he's still going to be in a decent enough lineup. He's still going to hit in hitters parks and in a good a good home hitters park in Toronto. Uh, in not as good of a lineup, but still could be a pretty good lineup. I'm not going to sell Devin Travis short, and I think where he's going in drafts, he's good value. He's a perfect flyer for a middle infield spot if you're in roto leagues, 12 team roto roto leagues or head to head leagues that use a middle infield spot. I think Travis is worth a gamble. All right, so you mentioned it was one body part, it was the shoulder. I mentioned it was multiple. I, I recall from what I've seen that he had a knee injury that caused him to miss the remainder of the playoffs and had knee surgery in November. Uh, doesn't seem to be something that's going to set him back, but that's what I was referring to with multiple body parts. You can see we don't always agree. Ralph is, you know, a, a Travis fan. I like him. Uh, I'm just not willing to invest in him depending on, you know, what it cost me by, you know, the 17th round. I'm hoping to have landed one of those, you know, tier one or tier two second baseman. Uh, Travis could potentially be in that upper echelon. But again, it all goes back to the health for me. So I don't know. The numbers you said for a full 162 game season, I got to admit, they, they did sound pretty, pretty nice. But and the, uh, and the injury was in the playoffs. I, I, I play fantasy. I don't care about the playoffs. Once the playoffs starts, I don't care about numbers. I care about I get pair. I care about wins. You know, I'm I'm just saying that, you know, <laughs> if it if it was a recurring, the same part recurring, you know, that's one thing. If it's different parts and, you know, Giancarlo Stan, we say with the freak injuries and they're always different. He gets hit by a pitch and then he's out and blah, blah, blah. blah. Uh, I just yeah. feel like, you know, it's a shoulder, then it's a knee. What's going to be next for him? Is he going to have a hamstring next year? Is he going to have plantar fasciitis next year? What's it going to be for Travis? Uh, I'm going to spin the wheel and, uh, when we're talking about, you know, his first DL stint of 2017, don't say I didn't warn you. But it's worse. It's worse for pitchers than it is for hitters. If it's a pitcher, I, I'm totally with you. I, I think it perfects, you know, uh, uh, impacts performance more. When it's a hitter and it's stuff like that, I mean, he's a, you know, almost he's a year removed from the, or a year and a half removed from a shoulder injury now. Okay. It doesn't flare it up again. Eh, shit, stuff happens. Okay. Well. I don't have a voodoo uh, doll or anything, and I'm not, you know, wishing any ill will on, you know, Devon Travis. But Tim Anderson is a shortstop, uh, also middle infielder. He's the 12th shortstop off the board right now, 162nd overall. It's the mid-13th round. Now, I was recently on the Friends with Fantasy Benefits podcast with our good friend Justin Mason, and I mentioned Anderson as sort of a poor man's version of Trevor Story. Um, what I meant by that was – Legit 2020 upside, a modest average, and a K rate north of 30%. You know, honestly, the way the game is being played now, if you're playing adequate defense, hitting home runs, getting on base, they're going to let you strike out. So anybody pointing to, you know, Tim Anderson as a high K guy, it, it, it shouldn't affect him, you know. And I think in Chicago with the White Sox, they just – Cut Brett Lowry. Uh, that's one less guy, you know, he has to have looking over his shoulder. Moncada, theoretically, probably is going to be the second baseman of the future, if not third, if they move, you know, Frazier or something. So Tim Anderson doesn't really – I think his position is safe uh, with the White Sox. And he's an interesting player because the high Ks haven't hurt his batting average, although they do sink his on-base percentage. And in a traditional league or even a points one, he's not necessarily going to hurt you unless you're playing with OBP. So – the upside is more realistically like a 25-25 kind of guy with an average above 280. And why wouldn't you want that on your roster? Plus, the price is right. So am I just being too optimistic with Tim Anderson? Or, you know, are there flaws in his game that you think are going to catch up to him with a, a full season's worth of work? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't totally disagree with you. And I think that he's, you know, for what his draft um, value is at this point, the 12th 
shortstop off the board. He's someone you could take a gamble on as a middle infielder, or if you you know you draft for the second baseman in some other positions earlier, you need a shortstop. He's somebody I gamble on because I think there is some risk reward there. I don't think the risk is is you know off the charts bad. Um, but there is some stuff there that you have to be cautious with. Uh, he does strike out a lot, but there's a lot of guys that strike out a lot. I think you hit the nail on the head there. Um, and it was below 30% last year. He hit 283 uh, in his you know debut season in the majors. He makes a lot of contact. Uh, you know, he puts the ball in the air enough. He makes some hard contact. He puts the ball on the ground enough uh, that I think you know his wheels you know will play up his batting average a little bit he's never going to be an on-base percentage guy almost like a starling castro type where he makes a lot of contact he's got some power he's got some speed this is castro mostly with the cubs not really what he's become um but he's not going to walk a lot i think it's sort of the same thing trevor story is different because trevor story does walk uh, I think Anderson's wheels are better than Story's are. I can see Story sort of evolving more into a power guy that runs from time to time, or I think that Anderson's always going to have higher stolen base numbers than he has power numbers. I don't think he's a 20-25 guy, but I think he's more like a 15-20, 15-25. I think the steals will be a little bit higher. He could hit anywhere in terms of a range of averages, depending upon what his batting average of balls and play is, anywhere from maybe 240, 245, up to 290. I don't think he's going to be a 300 hitter. Um, but he's not going to ha- hit b- below the Mendoza line or hit 220 or something like that. I don't see that. Um, but he's a good power speed gamble in fantasy drafts. He's somebody that I'll target in redrafts. Um, I don't think he's going to be a superstar. I, I don't think he's ever going to be a 2025 guy. Um, but I think he's going to have some useful seasons in fantasy for sure. And there's no risk of, of him you know, not being the starting everyday shortstop for the foreseeable future. Moncada will slot into second. Uh, Frazier's at third for the time being. Maybe they go out and find a guy. But I think him and Moncada are going to be a really interesting dynamic uh, top of the order combo and middle infield combo for the White Sox for a while. I'm rolling my eyes at the Castro thing because I loved Castro, as you mentioned, his cup days, you know, especially in mm-hmm. fantasy. And when, you know, he started to, you know, wane a little, I, I was a big supporter of his that he's still young enough. He's produced at a high level. And it's sure. funny to me because now that he's become a, a member of my hometown Yankees, the team I root for, uh, I don't like him nearly, nearly <laughs> as much as I did when he was a member of the Cubs. The Cubs. Um, and one interesting point you mentioned was that Trevor Story can actually walk. Um, I don't know that I would. <laughs> I, yes, he has some walks to his credit. I don't know that I would say he's a, what I would consider a walker. So um, he had, you know, 35 in 2016. What was his, is, what was his walk percentage? Uh, okay. Like I said, you know. It was 8.4%. It was 11.7% in 2015 with double A. It was 11.8 before that, 14.2, 12.5, 11.3. Trevor Story takes walks. All right. Does he have <laughs> um, Does he have the tennis balls cut out on the bottom of the legs, you know, with the walker? I don't know. Yeah, he does. That way he doesn't make any noises. Yeah, he, actually, he uses racket balls, actually. He likes the rubbery feel of the racket balls, so he cuts those right. out and throws them in the back of his walker. All right. Let's end it with that. Um, <laughs> if you got one middle infielder, uh, one, middle, one middle infield slot, and sure. you got an option of the three guys we talked about today, who's your guy? Because they're all going fairly within range of each other. Yeah, if I don't have any speed and my power is good, uh, it's Peraza all day. He's a guy I typically own. All things being equal, it's probably Peraza. If I'm a little light on power, um, I might go with Anderson uh, or Travis just because I need a little bit more pop than what Peraza is going to give me. But more more often than not, it's going to be Peraza. But I think it depends upon your team construction. And for me, it would be Peraza, all situations. I'd take Anderson as a fallback, but Devin Travis is to me the uh, the least desirable of these three today that I personally have an interest in. But we want to thank you for watching the baseball show. Hope you enjoyed what you saw. Like I said, if you didn't find any of this useful, enjoyable, uh, educational, anything, well, you know, let us know that because we're we're trying to make this as best we can for you. And if you did, thank you as always. Please hit the thumbs up. Uh, we like talking to you. Hopefully you like hearing us. This is the baseball show. Don't forget to check out the player library where you can see everybody we've covered to this point. Alphabetized, sorted, just that player on his own, isolated. And there you go. We're on all social media. Just look for us. Search for Nickel Press TV. You'll find us. 
We'll see you next time when we talk reprospects.